Hello everybody, Don here, your pop culture boy. We are gathered here to talk about the disappointing and pathetic actions of one of hip-hop's golden boys, Drake. Yeah, Drake? <laughs> Drake? Unless you live under a fucking rock, I'm sure you already know about the rap beef between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Now, rap beefs are nothing new, but I have to say this has been one of the biggest rap beefs since Biggie and Tupac. The beef that turned violent and deadly. And I know this beef hasn't reached that point, and I hope it won't, but it's kind of too late. There have been real life shootings and people being jumped since things escalated. So it's safe to say this beef has left the lyrical realm and slithered its way into the real world. Now throughout this ongoing beef, Drake has definitely taken the worst hits while Kendrick Lamar has been crowned the winner by the people. And Drake is not taking it well. Meanwhile his public image has been lyrically shattered into a million pieces by Kendrick Lamar. And instead of Drake bowing out gracefully or try to devise a comeback to show the world that he's the king of hip-hop, he has resorted to… how do you say it? Well, let's say he's resorted to being a pathetic crybaby and kind of a bear, to be honest. And his actions are showing that Drake is really an actor and he's not built for this at all. So for this video, let's talk about the sad but satisfying downfall of Champagne Poppy. I'm gonna also talk about Drake's career, back when he used to be untouchable, back when he was everyone's favorite biracial rapper. The beef with him and Kendrick Lamar, and I also give my take on why this is one of the weirdest beefs despite it being a cultural reset. I'm Don, your pop culture boy, <laughs> let's get into it. As we all know, Drake is one of the biggest names in modern rap. Drake has been releasing music since he was a teenager in his native Canada. Now, depending on the programs you consumed on TV in the 2000s, i.e. 106 and Park, TRL, or Zoe 101, or maybe some inappropriate late night TV, there is a strong chance you were first introduced to Drake on the Canadian teen drama Degrassi, The Next Generation. Personally, I never watched Degrassi, as I was too young, wild, and free to care. Life does not Oh my god. Now for most people, myself included, we were introduced to Drizzy Drake in the late 2000s, around 2008 to 2009, when music used to be poppin'. I don't give a fuck! And the song that introduced a lot of us to Drake was Best I Ever Had, which is included on the rapper's third mixtape, So Far Gone, released in 2009. Best I Ever Had was the track that propelled the rapper to stardom in the late 2000s, the track peaked number 2 on the Hot 100, becoming his first top 10 single. Best I Ever Had also got two Grammy nominations. The queen of rap, Nicki Minaj, is featured on the official remix of the track, which is included on her third mixtape, Be Me Up Scotty. Additionally, Drake collaborated with R&B singer Trey Songz on the track titled Successful. That song also helped Drake's status to rise in music. To further capitalize off the success of the singles released and the overall mixtape, So Far Gone was reissued as Drake's debut EP of the same name in the fall of 2009. So yeah, in his come up in the late 2000s, Drake had a strong buzz around his name and was projected to being a hot commodity in hip-hop, which was steadily on pace to being the number one music genre in the US, which eventually happened happened in the late 2010s. Love him or hate him, Drake played a strong part in the rise of hip-hop worldwide. The industry was paying close attention to the then-upcoming rapper, as different labels wanted to sign him. Drake's major label bidding war heats up. Universal signing likely, says this 2009 Billboard article. The article continues, Sources say three majors are impossible, one of the biggest bidding wars ever, in hopes of signing Drake, including Universal Motown and Atlantic Records. The presence of Warner Music Group CEO Lior Cohen and COO Julie Greenwald at Drake's recent New York show further intensified the speculation that WMG was making a serious play. In the end, Drake signed to Young Money Entertainment in 09 by founder Lil Wayne. That same year, Wayne also signed Nicki Minaj. After signing with Lil Wayne's label, Drake went on to produce some of the biggest albums and hits of his career. Listen, Drake's old music hits different. His debut solo single, Over, not his most commercially successful at the time, but it will literally put you in a coma due to how dramatic it is and it slaps at the same time. Remember the motto, the track that popularized the YOLO in 2011. Headlines, hold on we're going home. Home. Going home. Back to back, Hotline Bling, One Dance, and Find Your Love, one of his early songs as one of my favorite songs of all time. And I know I failed to mention so many of his hits, so let me know in the comments the ones that I missed, including
including his features. In terms of albums, every album Drake releases becomes this big event. But after 2016's Views, the rapper's fourth studio project, I've checked out of the album release party shits. To this day, I'm still yet to complete Views, too many songs. That makes the album unlistenable to a certain extent. And this is the thing with nowadays Drake. He prioritizes quantity over quality. He's releasing albums with runtimes that is in competition with feature length films. And between albums, he's releasing multiple mixtapes and collaborative projects. It's just too much. Yeah, I can't, you can't do it! Oh, I'm stressing me the hell. I stress you. I can't. You need to I'm done. I'm done. And it's not that I'm completely oblivious to his albums released after views, but I literally don't care anymore. I'm like, oh, new album came out? Damn, that's crazy. See you in three months. After 2016, his albums are just not that good anymore. Throughout Drake's career, specifically between his debut to his fourth studio album, despite him being widely liked and adored by a lot of people, many did not like him because of his image. Hip-hop is known as, and for a lot of people, is this hyper-masculine genre that promotes violence and tells stories of getting out the hood or overcoming hard times. For some reason, Drake doesn't fit into that aesthetic for a lot of people. The general sense us to be a rapper, you have to look tough and always be mean muggin. And then, here enters Drake. He's smiling, singing about love in his feelings. He wears turtleneck sweaters, seldom wears jewelry. He did not fit the aesthetics of a rapper. He wasn't like a Jay-Z or a T.I. He was more like a pop star like a Justin Timberlake or Justin Bieber for a lot of people. Growing up, I remember people saying he was too soft and a light-skinned rapper that sang too much on his records. And a lot of people did not respect him for that. DMX notoriously went on the record saying he did not like Drake. What about Drake? You like Drake? No. My man. <laughs> he didn't even say DMX. He didn't even say That's my guy right there. No. No. That's why X is necessary no. in the game right oh, there. Man. Now, why don't you like Drake? I don't like anything about Drake. Mm -hmm. my I don't like his voice. I don't, I don't like that. He talks about I don't, I don't talk. I'll be trying to I don't tell like his face. People. I don't, like I, don't, I don't like the way he walks like nothing. I don't care. <laughs> but I will say his team was smart for marketing him as the soft skin, light skin, biracial rapper per se, because he doesn't pull off the tough guy image. The smiling, the emotional music suits him, and that's why he had a huge female following. Not as much right now, in my opinion, because it seems like it's mainly niggas that are obsessed with Drake nowadays, like Mel or DJ Academics. Drake's biggest downfall is not indicative to his music being tired or that he oversaturated the market. His biggest downfall is very similar to Nicki Minaj, which is they don't possess the ability to beef with someone that's on their level. And more on Nicki in a bit, but Drake can only thrive in lyrical beefs when he and the other party are sub-dissing each other or when the other artist is just not on his level. Example, Meek Mills. Remember the beef with him and Meek? That beef went like this. Meek said, Drake doesn't write his own raps then Drake replied, is that a world tour or your girl's tour? And the crowd went crazy. Drake was assumed winner of that back and forth back in the day because he was the bigger artist. Let's keep it real. What I've noticed with Drake is that whenever he's in a beef or dropping subs, he always uses his status and fame as the focal point to wow the crowd, i.e. saying he has more money or he sold more records on a fire beat, which is what mainly carries him, not his lyrics in my opinion. Drake's image hasn't been the same after the Pusha T incident. Drake and Pusha T had been beefing since 2011 and in response to Drake's Duppy Freestyle released on May 25th, 2018, Pusha T dropped the story of Adidon four days later, dismantling Drake's public image. Pusha dissected Drake being uncomfortable with his biracial identity. Drake's father that wasn't really a part of Drake's life while empathized with Drake's baby mama who's a former star while calling Drake a deadbeat dad and name dropping Drake's secret child, Adonis. Also, what was very damaging to Drake's career and image was the cover art of the track, a very real picture of Drake in blackface back in the day. This was the final nail in the coffin that made the entire world side-eye Drake's character while also putting an end to the beef and crowning Pusha T, the winner. But like a cat, Drake has nine lives and was resurrected a 
few days later. Now let's fast forward to 2024. Enters Kendrick Lamar. Like Pusha T, Kendrick and Drake has been beefing with each other since the 2010s. That includes a bunch of subs from both artists. After the two rappers collaborated on several tracks. Now the beef started after Kendrick dissed J. Cole and Drake on Metro Boomings like that. In response to Cole's line on Drake's 2023's first person shooter, where Cole said, love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it K-Dot, is it Aubrey, or me? We the big three, like we starting a league, but right now I feel like Muhammad Ali. Then, Kendrick responded this year on Like That with, motherfuck the big three, nigga it's just big me, nigga BOMP! Headshots, bow bow bow, drawing the line in the sand. J. Cole responded two weeks later with 7 minutes drill, which was a snooze fest and wasn't creative as most of what Cole said about Kendrick can also be applied to himself easily. Anyway, the diss was so whack, J. Cole had to apologize for it and remove the track from streaming services. Grand opening, grand closing. Now here's where things started cooking. After Cole jumped ship leaving Drake to fend for himself, Drake released Push Ups, a good song, but not diss track material. Yes, it was directed at Kendrick, but delivery wise it felt like Drake was trying to make another hit instead of just bringing that diss vibe. It falls flat in the threatening department as you literally get lost in the beat. That same day, Drake released Taylor Made Freestyle, but that was taken down due to a copyright complaint from Tupac's estate because they used AI generated vocals of the late rapper. Kendrick Lamar hit back at Drake with Euphoria and 616 in LA, calling out the Toronto native for being a culture appropriator that shouldn't use the n-word anymore, and accused Drake of trying to stop the release of Like That with a cease and desist. Now on the same day Kendrick dropped 616 in LA, May 3rd, Drake hit right back with Family Matters, where he accused Kendrick of domestic violence and claim Dave Free, who's a part of Kendrick's creative team, is the father of one of Kendrick's kids. Then, oh my god, within a couple of minutes, Kendrick dropped Meet the Grams, which sent shockwaves throughout the universe. Even the aliens on Mars were shook. To sum up what happened, Kendrick staged this family conference-like atmosphere on the song, where he's having conversations with Drake, Adonis, Drake's son, his mama, and alleged secret daughter, which I don't believe by the way. Kendrick accused Drake of being a sexual deviant and a sex trafficker that had cosmetic surgeries. Then the following day, K-Dot dropped Not Like Us, which explicitly called Drake a pedophile. Another one, thank you. Now, Aubrey did respond with the heart part six, basically denying the allegations, and based on his delivery, he sounded defeated. And let's not forget, other artists have taken shots at Drake during this period. We had Megan Thee Stallion dissing Drake earlier this year, accusing him of getting surgeries, and Rick Ross also called Drake BBL Drizzy. Drake continued to look like a complete clown in the eyes of the people following his defeat, and the actions of his closest peers in the industry also affected him as well. Back in September, it was announced that Kendrick Lamar will be headlining next year's Super Bowl halftime show at the Caesar Superdome in New Orleans. Normally, there's no pushback on who's performing because why? However, after this announcement, the industry really showed their ass and had this weird outcry that Lil Wayne should have been selected instead because he's from New Orleans, a factor no one had ever disputed before. Example, Beyonce, who's from Texas, performed in New Orleans in 2013 to no backlash. Usher, another Texan, he headlined the Super Bowl last year in Las Vegas to no backlash. And Rihanna is from Barbados, a different country, and no one said she shouldn't have because she He's not American. I found the whole outcry for Wayne comical as I've never seen that happen before and the timing and relation to Drake is extremely convenient as well. We had Wayne's manager crying on social media, Master P saying that oh little Wayne should you know be you know should have been selected instead. Even Hurricane Chris, remember him? He was going off talking about homage and blah 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 and Nicki Minaj going off on Jay-Z on X accusing Jay-Z of not liking Birdman and Drake also virtue signaling by referring to Lil Wayne as a young black man, as if Kendrick isn't younger and black as well. I let all of y'all down by not getting that opportunity. It broke me and I'm just trying to put me back together, but my God, have you all helped me. 
And although I do understand Wayne's, you know, feeling a type of way for not being selected as he wanted to perform at the Super Bowl for some time now, but it all seemed planned to undermine Kendrick Lamar. Because let's be real, looking back when Lil Wayne was in his prime, he probably wouldn't give two shits if people wanted him to perform at the Super Bowl. You know, back in the day when Wayne was a hot commodity, he didn't give two shits. He was very arrogant. And as I said, he probably he probably would have told you to fuck off if you were like, oh my God, Wayne, are you going to perform at the Super Bowl? He'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> but I guess people get older, people change. So I get that. And no offense, but Lil Wayne, he doesn't look well in my opinion. <laughs> I love his music, his old music, and he's a legend no doubt, but no, get well soon. A few days ago, Drake accused Universal Music, who distributes for both he and Kendrick, that the company conspired against him, accusing also Spotify and Universal of artificially boosting the numbers of Kendrick's number one hit, Not Like Us. In a filing Monday, November 25th in Manhattan court, Drake's Frozen Moments LLC accuses UMG of launching an illegal scheme involving bots, payola, and other methods to pump up Lamar's song, a track that savagely attacked act Drake's amid an ongoing feud between the two stars. UMG did not rely on chance or even ordinary business practices. Attorneys for Drake's company write, it instead launched a campaign to manipulate and saturate the streaming services and airways, reports Billboard. So Drake basically said, we still win. Now, this is not a lawsuit as yet, but more like a petition. They are asking the courts to allow them to get information they need from UMG to validate their RICO violation accusation. And I see some people saying how this is a good thing and it will help indie artists, which sounds good, but I don't believe that. In my opinion, this is Drake's last effort to get back at Kendrick. Maybe I'm in a different universe, but isn't Drake a rapper? In what universe does a rap beef turns into a lawsuit? And the thing is, he could have rapped about this shit and made an elaborate music video, but he'd rather sue instead. I'm sorry, Drake, but... Man, you a bitch. You a bitch. Why didn't he file a lawsuit years ago when he was being accused of the same thing? Hmm. Remember when Scorpio came out and Drake's music was plastered up and down different streaming uh, platforms? And didn't Nicki Minaj also confirm this back in 2018 in this deleted tweet? He accused Universal of payola, but why didn't he sue when he was also being accused of payola himself in 2016? Remember when Kanye accused him and DJ Khaled of payola while on stage at his St. Pablo tour? Now, this is just a theory, but Drake is like that co-worker who's in bed with the boss, always causing trouble, getting other, you know, workers fired for bullshit. But now that the boss gets tired of him, now he wants to cry wolf and sabotage and cause this big scene. And now in an update, Drake is filing another legal action against UMG for not blocking the release of Not Like Us, which alleges he's a pedophile, accusing the company of defamation. My take on these petitions is overall I'm not mad because I feel like in my opinion the world knows that everything Drake is accusing UMG of he himself has benefited from and is guilty of Drake's crying defamation but didn't he accuse Kendrick of beating his fiance Whitney on family matters wasn't that a defamatory statement as well? I'm confused. On the same track, Drake also said Kendrick's fiance fucked on Kendrick with Day Free and that Kendrick isn't the father of one of his children. Like, that's not defamatory? That's what prompted Kendrick to hit back low as well on Meet the Grams and Not Like Us. Isn't what Drake did the definition of fuck around and find out? Listen, Drake is just mad because for the first time, the first time, things are not going his way. Way. So all of this discovery his lawyers are requesting may backfire. It's baby daddy, it's like Drake has a rich baby daddy named Lucian and Universal. Wow. 
He's like, you know, like, man, my daddy got it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, wow. my daddy controlled the spins. My daddy got the DSPs. My daddy, Drake wow. has a rich baby daddy named so, Lucian. So now, despite this beef being a cultural reset, I have to admit, it's a little strange. Essentially, the parties involved are trying to cancel each other socially instead of just trying to be seen as the more dominant person. Like other beefs in the past, this one is a lot more psychological. Beefs have always been personal, but I've never seen one this personal. Both Kendrick and Drake are nerds. Like, Kendrick is like a conscious nerd that wants to keep the elements in balance balance and Drake is like a nerd nerd who's taken advantage of the power he now has. The power he fantasized about having when he was a kid that he now has access to. It's really interesting beef. The punchlines are about morals, righteousness, and not being a nice person. Character. And maybe I'm just too old as I am 80 years old. Yes, the beef has been really engaging and Kendrick won. But also something is off about this entire situation. All in all, Drake is going out sad, and for a lot of people, this is satisfying and a well-deserved downfall. Drake is seen as a colonizer in hip-hop, and his rise has rubbed many in the industry the wrong way. Look at it like this. Drake can play multiple characters in the space of hip-hop. Meanwhile, the rappers that are more black can't. Another factor is that his female supporters are dwindling as he loves dissing women. And for a very long period, women were his main supporters. A lot of people, myself included, think his music is not good anymore. And with this beef, it shows that Drake is not built for this at all. He's just not. The fact that he can't come back lyrically and rather resorting to sneak dissing on social media in a way that's more suited for an artist like I Spice, going on XQC stream to seem like a tough guy but is visibly getting emotional when the so-called ops music, Steve Lacey and The Weeknd's music is being played. Or the fact that he's starting his tour in Australia on the same day of Kendrick's halftime set. It all says a lot that he lost and he can't handle it. Personally, I don't revel in people's downfalls, but with this stab to Drake's ego, maybe he'll get back to basics and start releasing shit that actually sounds good again. What do you think? I'm Donnie Pop Culture Boy, and I will see you in the next one.